Hello and welcome everyone. Um, I am Kate Kerno. I'm part of the housing team and we're super excited to have y'all here. We're going to get started in just one minute while we make sure that we have everything ready um, in terms of our slides and our chat and our Q&A and all those things. So if you would, while we're getting ourselves um, just a little bit more primed, go ahead and take the poll that we've started. Let us know if you're in uh, in, in state, out of state or international student, whether or not you have your room assignment info, whether or not you've connected with your RA or your room, uh, roommate. and what is the good word? I hope everybody knows the answer to that one because classes start soon. So we're going to start in just one more minute. Thanks so much for everybody for being here. All right. Thank you, everybody, for your patience and for starting to fill out the poll. We're going to leave that running for a few more minutes just to get a sense of, of everyone who's joining us today and, and where you're all joining from. Um, but I'm glad to see that it seems like on the whole, folks are connecting with the information they need. And um, we've got a good spread of in-state, out-of-state, and international students. Uh, so uh, like I said, I'm Kate Kerno. I use she, her pronouns. I'm part of the housing team. Um, I'm responsible for move-in activities, but I'm lucky that I get to plan it with a pack of awesome interns, um, all Georgia Tech students, and they're joining me today to help us with this uh, information session. So uh, we uh, have a couple of slides we're going to go through, give you a rundown of how you can prepare for move-in day, what's going to happen on move-in day, and a little bit about what happens after you get yourself settled in. Uh, and then once we're done with that, we'll take any questions you have in the Q&A function. Um, we'll use the chat to drop some links and other information for you, but uh, do know that generally speaking, we, we will only be taking questions from the Q&A chat. Uh, so as we're going through the presentation, if you have questions, write them down for yourself. And if we don't answer them by the end of the presentation, uh, let us, uh, that's when I would say put them in, because we may well answer a lot of your questions during the presentation. Uh, the number one thing that I do want to say in advance, though, is that we will, we are recording this presentation, um, and hopefully we will have the file successfully saved this time so that we can share it out after the fact. Um, so with that, um, I would love to get to our next slide, which just has the critical dates that you need to be aware of uh, looking at move in. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, Everybody, if you haven't already put this time on your calendar, please do. Uh, August 13th and 14th is when most of our new students will move in. Uh, that's when we'll have the most volunteers and sort of most, most of the PEP uh, and other things kind of rolled out. We really want to roll out the gold carpet for our new residents and make sure that y'all feel at home. So that's the 13th and the 14th for most of you. Uh, everybody else will start to move in from the 15th through the 20th. Uh, and it's all right if you're a new student moving in at that time as well. The week of welcome actually runs all the way through the 20th and there's lots of fun things for new residents to participate in. So even if you miss those first few days, uh, it's all right. We will talk a little bit about the difference in process on the 13th and 14th versus the 15th through 20th um, here in just a little minute. And it's important to know that the, the process uh, is different a little bit based on which part of our housing you live in. So. Uh, but before those days, we want to make sure you have some tips on how to prepare. Um, we know that uh, a lot of the things you can do to make your move-in day a less stressful one are things that can actually start at home. Uh, and some of the first ones uh, to cover are uh, you want to make sure that you have your room appointment and your, I'm sorry, your room assignment and your check-in appointment. Um, I see from the poll that most of y'all do, and that's great to hear. Um, I do see one or two huhs, and that's good to know. Like, if you are not clear on what that means, we want to make sure you know. So your room assignment, at this point, you if you didn't select a room for yourself, one has been assigned to you. Um, and if you didn't select a check-in appointment, then, then we have assigned one to you. You can go and swap those in the My Housing Portal until July 31st at 10 a.m., 
Uh, room swap is open where if somebody else wants to change rooms, they kind of say raise their hand. And if you want to swap with them, you can. Uh, it's a little bit of a free for all during this time where it's just like we let y'all kind of talk amongst yourselves if you want to switch. The same is true for move-in appointments. We're able to make a few exceptions, but for the most part, if you need to change your appointment, it's because someone else has given up an appointment. Uh, that appointment is also the time that we want you to arrive at check-in, not the time that you should plan on unloading. So check-in is the kind of starting point for you for everything, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, but that's where you want to arrive at the time of your check-in appointment. Uh, something else that you can do is pack smart. We know that the fewer big, like doing few big bags or big bins or tubs or what have you, um, is a lot easier to do than like a thousand little boxes or little tote bags. Um, we will have big old bins to help you with move in, uh, but it's, you know, bending over and, and grabbing something out of that bin a hundred times versus four or five times really does make a big difference in, in your move in experience. And it is important to know that a lot of our first year halls do not have an elevator. So you, whatever you pack, you need to be prepared to hoof up the stairs a few steps, at least in most cases. Um, and so again, fewer bags and bigger boxes, uh, we find is the smarter approach. You also want to make sure you know what items you're, you should and should not bring. Uh, one of my team is going to drop a link in the chat for y'all here uh, that goes to the, our items to bring page. And that covers things that we recommend, as well as the things that you are not allowed to have. And that includes things like things with open heating elements uh, and things like that. So make sure you do review that. It's a helpful page. It also has the dimensions for our appliances in terms of the limitation on fridge size and things like that. So you want to cover that. Uh, if you haven't already, you want to submit your buzz card photo. Uh, if you submit, I believe by tomorrow, they're still going to allow us to put it into your, uh, like print it early enough that we can put it into your move-in packet. And that'll just make your move-in day a lot smoother to just have it from the get-go. Um, and also we want you to submit your photo early, even if you miss this deadline, just because you don't want to have to go on move-in day and take that picture after you're like a hot mess for move-in stuff. So we really recommend you submit that photo in advance. And again, ideally in the next couple of days so that you can make your day easier and have it in your packet. Uh, the other thing you really need to do is review the route to check in. We will send you this map in an email that's coming out in the next day or so. Uh, we want you to follow this route along North Avenue, along Tech, uh, Tech Parkway, and then to the CRC because that is where the magic starts. And also we're going to change and rearrange a bunch of other roadways nearby that will make it impossible for you to get anywhere any in any other fashion than by taking this route. So we really do want you to review the map before you go and make sure you know how you're getting there. Uh, there's a few other steps that you can take to be prepared and just make sure that your transition into being a uh, resident is a smooth one. So if you haven't already, reach out to your roommate. It looks like a bunch of y'all have, and I'm so happy to hear that because uh, it's really important that y'all talk about like who's bringing a fridge and some of those other things in advance and just getting to know each other in general is a good thing. Uh, if you don't know who your roommate is, that information at this point should be listed with your room assignment on the housing portal. If you go into the housing portal and look under resources and then scroll down, you should see roommate information. It's also listed a few other places. Um, so if you don't see a roommate or you have questions about it, don't hesitate to reach out to the help desk with those questions. Uh, another thing you can do is change to your preferred name if you'd like. You can submit paperwork to have a preferred name appear on the front of your buzz card and a few other places that's useful. Um, we just dropped an adorable video on our social media about how to do it. So if you want to check out the housing Instagram and Facebook, you'd find that video with those instructions. Uh, we also have a whole bunch of uh, apps that the students recommend that y'all download. Uh, so this list here is just a handful. Obviously, the guidebook is critical for Week of Welcome. Live Safe is one of our safety apps. Um, you're definitely going to need Duo just to function. Translock, I think, is critical. Lots of, again, the students agree these are the critical apps to download. Uh, but if you visit, the, uh, we're actually going to drop a link to a page full of apps that you'll need, and it has links to these apps um, to make it a little easier for you, whether you're uh, on Android or uh, Apple, you'll be able to find those links. So do take some time to get your phone souped up and ready for life on campus before you arrive. Uh, and I think that takes us to a uh, discussion about move-in day itself. And then I turn it over to uh, my colleague, Tejan. Take it away, Tejan. Hello, I am Tejan. I'm one of the interns here, uh, one of the logistics interns for the summer. And I'm a third year, rising third year mechanical engineering major here at Tech. So I'm going to be talking about the move-in days uh, on the day of the move-in. So first we'll talk about the 13th and the 14th. Um, people moving in on these days have to follow the provided map to the CRC or the Campus Recreation Center and make sure that when you're going through the CRC, you can't have a vehicle over six foot seven inches because it is a parking deck. So um, make sure that you are fitting within this clearance height and that there are no trailers. 
uh, to make it easily through this parking deck. Um, and you have to make sure that your resident, when you're going through, has their ID and their QR code ready in the front seat of the vehicle. And you will receive a key packet with a key and a buzz card. So at this point, it is very important. Make sure you submit your photo to um, the photo upload portal on the buzz card because this will make it much easier, much smoother. When you pick up your buzz card, you'll be able to uh, have it right there with your photo already. If you don't have your photo uploaded, then you're going to have to go to a satellite location and uh, take a photo on the day of to get your buzz card. And it's just a very hectic day. It's You don't want to add one more thing to your to-do list on this move-in day. So I would highly recommend... Uh, if you haven't done yet, really, you have to go there and submit your photo ahead of time so that it makes the process a lot smoother for you on the day of. So once you get through the CRC, you have to follow the directions to East or West Campus, uh, then to your unloading zone within that. Um, and when you reach your unloading zone, you'll have a lot of volunteers and bins who will be able to <laughs> you'll have a lot of volunteers to assist you. And there will be bins to help you bring your stuff up to your uh, up to your room. For a quick unload, your driver should stay in the car. This is very important, actually. Uh, make sure that you have someone with the car who's going to take it to the short-term parking because we can't have a backup of cars uh, within the unloading zone that stretches and snowballs into a big um, gridlock within campus. So make sure that as soon as you get to your unloading zone, you get your stuff out, and then your driver moves your car to, your short to the short-term parking ASAP. Don't worry about making it back, like taking super long because we will have shuttles running to bring you back so that you can spend uh, as much time with the resident as possible or like to just to help everything moves uh, quicker. You don't have to worry about not being able to, um, I'm missing out on time with the person moving in. So it will be available. The short-term parking will be available to you um, until 9 p.m. that night and yeah, so just make sure as soon as you unload, you move the car to the short-term parking. Now, if you're going to North, North Ave Apartments or the GLC, which is a graduate uh, learning commons, uh, you park in the permitted lot or the visitor's parking and you visit your area office to get the key and bus card at the time of your appointment. So West Campus students will have a mini drive-through at Fitton Hall, sim kind of similar to the one at the CRC. And then you can go to the area office to check out a bin if you need to um, to help bring the items to your room. Now, if you're a student that's arriving by transit or rideshare, please let us know as soon as possible. We're still working out um, the best way to do this because uh, this is something that we've uh, wanted to implement more um, uh, thoroughly um, based on previous like uh, comments and everything like that. We know there's people coming with transit and rideshare and we want to make sure you get the best experience possible. So you'll receive more information about how to check in without doing uh, drive through. This, this is maybe including a golf cart ride. And the best way that we can help you is if you help us by filling out the survey and showing, telling us which uh, form of transportation you're planning on using uh, on moving day. And then we can better accommodate you based on your um, response. And that'll bring us to after move and I'll hand the baton over to KJ. Uh, yep. All right. Hi, are you guys doing? My name is Kyron Sanders. I am a rising second year and also a Leo intern. I'm here to talk to you guys more about what to do after fall movement. So after you're done moved in and everything, here's some tips and tricks to know what to do for the after hours. Our check-in time ends at 5 p.m. If you happen to arrive late, we you would have to visit the area office, which we have a link provided in the chat. And after you visit the area office, which closes at 8 p.m., then you will need to call the RA on duty. There will be signs and there will be a bunch of posted signs uh, posted on the doors of the residence halls that you will have to find the number on the card in your um, to call the RA. After that, you would need to collect your uh, key, um, your dorm key at the CRC, and that's only available the next day on August 14th only at the CRC. If not that day, then your key will be available at the area office on all the other days after the 14th. 
please keep in mind that there will be fewer bins and there will be less volunteers for those after hours and late arrivals. So you might have to do a little bit more hands-on work, but that'll be okay. There'll still be volunteers and bins provided for you. And there'll be more information for late arrivals on the link. Here's some things that you might be able to do after you're moved in and situated. We have a nest fest happening between the hours of 10 and 3 p.m. Well, 10 a.m. through 3 p.m. on the 13th and 14th. There will be one happening in the West Village uh, field and one happening in the connector courtyard. There, the nest fest is just somewhere you can get information and fun, more things you can know on the first day. And um, just like there will be snacks and food provided and lots of fun opportunities. The dining halls will be available for you on that Sunday. If you needed to go grab something to eat right after a hectic move in, there will be signs posted on the road for recycling and cardboard and styrofoam after you're finished moving in and you have a bunch of trash and recyclables left over. One thing uh, that we will be telling you guys is to complete your room, room condition reports, which is one of the documents that we'll be having on our housing portals that will just be just for like non-urgent purposes, any conditions that might happen that happen in your room that you weren't involved in when you move in, um, which is different from a maintenance request because those are like urgent matters that happen to need to be attended to immediately. Um, anything that needs to be fixed for you to be able to live in your dorm for through its continuity of the fall semester. Um, and other than that, we will be having our week of welcome where you will just be able to get accommodated to other students, accommodated to tech opportunities, more learn more about your major, major and other things like that. And um, yeah, that's all about for after fall moving and then I will be turning things back over to Kate if you guys have any more questions and things you need to ask. Actually, hold on, I'm sorry, you guys. I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna go over this slide too. Um, we're gonna be talking about more upcoming in communications. Um, things will be dropping to you guys. Make sure you guys need to watch your emails, watch your texts, and we will be having, actually, this is our last info session that we'll have uh, at the, another info session that we'll have at 11 a.m. Um, and make sure you guys reach out to your housing help desk. Um, you guys will be able to submit a query and there'll be a query in the link in the chat provided to you guys. All right, and now I turn it back over to Kate if you guys have any more questions. All right, folks, if folks want if folks want to start putting their questions into the Q&A, give us just a second to sort of get those settled. And then um, I'm going to bring on Tanisha, who's going to help me ask a few of these questions. So give us just one more second, folks. All right, folks, thanks so much for joining us. Tanisha, uh, what's the first question we want to talk through today? Um, the first question asks, since traditional extension cords are restricted, what, uh, what are traditional extension cords? Um, it just means like, like if you think about a long orange extension cord, like that we just don't need you running a long cord that has like you know 100 watts of of juice or what have you in it if you have like a you know like a 15 foot cord with multi with a couple of prongs at the end like a surge protector that's allowed um right is that okay that tracks um all right what do we have next um, are multiple cars allowed during a move in yeah um we find that quite a few folks will bring multiple cars the only thing we encourage you to do or need you to do is pay attention to signage for folks who have multiple cars so that as you go through the check-in process you can stay together next someone asks how could they get in contact with their roommate do you want to tell them about that 
Uh, it's actually in your housing portal. You could see your roommate's information under resources, I believe. And once you click that, you can see their contact information and any of their socials that they put under their profile. Awesome. I see some questions also here about uh, app, uh, appliances and things like that. You can have a, a fridge or a microwave. Um, the list of, again, like limitations for sizes and things like that are listed on our website on the items to bring page. Um, and uh, that the item spring page also has the list of things that are not allowed. Um, so if it has like an open heating element, that's going to be a no. Um, uh, but if it's, you know, like an express kettle, things like that, we see that happen quite a bit. Um, if anyone is looking to rent a fridge or microwave, there are companies who do that. And we um, are trying to work with the ones who, who want to. We don't have anyone in particular that we endorse or recommend, um, but it is an option if anybody needs it. What do we have next is question. Next question is, do the dining halls remain open after lunch on the first move-in day? They sure do. Really that Sunday of move-in at lunch when they open, it's like they're open then until basically like winter break or maybe like Thanksgiving break, so. Do parents attend the new student convocation? Um, new student convocation, as far as I'm aware, is for new students. Um, I know parents are allowed to like sit in the bleachers, but the idea is that like that is that is if you haven't separated at that point, that is when you say your goodbyes. Does that make sense? Is that okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's next? How long will they have with their families to move in once their move-in appointment starts? Great, that's a great question. So the move-in appointment, that's when you should arrive at check-in at the centralized check-in or at your area office if you're not going through centralized check-in. Uh, and that's like the, the 20 or 30, I'm sorry, 15 or 30, 30 minute window that you should go through check-in. After that, um, you sort of have all the time you need other than within the unloading zone, we do need you, you to unload as quickly as possible, like ideally five or 10 minutes and we'll have lots of folks available to help to make that possible so that we can get your car moved to short-term parking. Keeping the unloading zones clear is really critical for the whole day work in since we have 3,700 people move in over the course of two days. Um, but really beyond that like bit of rush to get your, your car empty and moved, then you have the rest of the day to unpack and, and do some of the other activities that KJ mentioned. Um, there's another question about if students are allowed to switch bed assignments once they move in with their roommate. Um, like if you're A and B, especially if you're in a traditional dorm, there's no reason that we would know the difference or, or have a, a feeling about that. If you are in an apartment though, and that, and like one of you has the A key and one of you has the B key, the serial number on the A key is assigned to me and the serial number on the B key is assigned to Tanisha. And if we switch and then I turn in her key and she turns in my key, we'll get dinged for that. So if you're gonna switch, make sure that it is, like if you're within a traditional room, that's just fine. If you need to switch within an apartment, we need to make sure that that is done actually in the back end of the housing portal. So you'll just probably need to submit a housing ticket, a help to desk ticket to get that switch made. Someone else asks, when will housing charges be posted to student accounts for payment? They all post at the same time for everything else on your student bill. So I believe that posts in the first week of class. And I have heard it is due on August 28th at 4 p.m. Eastern. From our, our colleague in financial aid says that over and over. So yes, August 28th at 4 p.m. is the due date for that. But I believe everything posts the first week of class. Someone asks, where will the short-term parking be on West Campus? Uh, the short-term parking is going to be in a couple of different lots, but you don't actually really need to worry about where it is because uh, we have a bunch of signage and basically the way traffic is, there's nowhere you can go but there from your unloading zone. And it's also good to know that we will have a shuttle that brings you back from the short-term parking back to your hall. So no matter where it is in relation to your hall, you won't have to do too many steps to get back. Are there multiple Ethernet ports in the dorms? Uh, there should be at least two Ethernet ports or an Ethernet port for every bed. Um, I don't know that there's more than that. Yeah. So someone asked if they could put the list of apps back on the screen. Oh, yeah. Camille, can we go back to the list of apps that's in the before you, um, before you uh, leave for campus? And actually, if um, Tanisha, can I have you talk through what each of these is and, and what we use them for? Sure, the GT guidebook is for 
the events and info for the week of welcome. So where you have all your festivities and where you meet all the new students on campus for the first time. For dual mobile, Georgia Tech has a system where they uh, make you authorize that you're logging in whenever you log into like your email or bus port. For mobile order, this is where you can order like any of your dining halls up beforehand or any of your meals that you want. For uh, translog, you can see the routes of all the buses on campus, and you can also tell when they're coming to your stop or like which stop is the closest to you. For Stingerette, this is the nighttime shuttle that we have. I think it starts around eight o'clock and ends sometimes in the middle of the night. And so if, you're, if you don't wanna walk back from the library or whatever, you could get that Stingerette to and from your dorm. Uh, my CRC has all of the gym information on campus and park mobile is where you what you use to pay for any parking on campus. Great. All right. What's our next question? Um, I know we had um, the question about uh, having access to this presentation recording. Uh, so Y'all, I say this with fingers crossed and knocking on wood because we had a technical difficulty last time. Um, but theoretically, assuming it works this time, yeah, knock on wood, uh, we'll be posting it on our social media channels. We'll post the link to it as well in the next email that I said that we're working on that has the map and a few other things. So we'll send it that way. Um, and, uh, and again, on our social media channels will be the best way to find that link after the fact. Someone asked, how can you rent a refrigerator and or microwave? Uh, there's a, several companies that do that kind of rental. Um, uh, I know I have been talking with uh, my micro fridge and micro fridge and uh, university and student services does it. And uh, I think there's a university trucking, it. lots of different companies. We don't, um, we don't have a contract with any of them, but any of the ones that y'all reach out to who like then connect with us, we're happy to let them in to deliver your fridges in advance. Um, so yeah, it's, you would just need to reach out and connect with one of those. I know that there's a little bit of difference in terms of you know pricing and, and um, features and things like that. Someone who's arriving by MART or transit asks if they happen to come earlier than their check-in time, will they be able to check in? Within reason, yeah. Um, and I say within reason because I know a lot of you who have a three o'clock appointment are going to show up at 8 a.m., which is a full hour before we even open. And it happens every year. And it makes that 8 a.m. hour really tough on everyone because we have y'all have appointments specifically to keep things spaced out. That said, we also know that like between taking MARTA or a flight being late or what have you, like if you're not traveling in your own car, there's all sorts of reasons why, well, and even if you are traveling in your own car, all sorts of reasons why you could be running late. Um, if you find that you're a smidge early, like we within an hour or two, come on through um, and, and hopefully there's not a huge line as a result of other folks having the same experience. Um, that really, again, only tends to be an issue for folks who show up an hour early in the morning. We're looking at you. We know you're all are type A students, some of you, and want to come here and do that, but we ask for the most part, really try to keep it to when your um, check-in appointment is. If, uh, again, I mentioned like, you know, your, uh, your flight could be delayed or what have you. I know we said in the after hours um, slide that there's a couple of different things you can do depending on what time you then arrive. Um, if you know you're gonna be running late, don't hesitate to submit a housing help desk ticket and let us know. And then that way we can just be prepared and have your key waiting somewhere that's more functional or more uh, uh, helpful. So, uh, but there's no requirement that you do that. We know a lot of stuff can happen during that day. All right, what other good questions should we ask? For graduate students moving into Tampa homes, will they be able to just park and unload? Yeah, for graduate students, for the most part, um, you'll need to park at the area office to get your key. Um, and then it's just a short distance to whichever hall you're in within 10th and home from there. Uh, so for the most part, within the grad housing and at North Avenue, like where you park is where you unload and it's all very walkable to the area office. Um, I know in North Avenue, you might have some like elevator to get to between the different terraces, but um, it's not too bad. And for 10th and home, many of the halls have spots like just right out in front of them. So. Usually after moving, what do students do once their parents leave? 
What do students do once their parents leave? Well, on the first day, uh, which will be Monday this year, the first day that everybody's here, you will have a floor meeting with your RA. It'll be the first one and it'll be mandatory because you will talk about some very important things. And I'm going to guess it's going to be at 8 p.m. because it seems like they're always at 8 p.m. on that first full day when everyone's here. Um, but beyond that, there is so many things that happen during week of welcome uh, that your students can participate in once y'all leave. Um, we also know, like just generally speaking that night, I feel like that's the first night that folks start playing like werewolf and what are they still do you don't play like murder these days still or is it just werewolf and mafia yeah. those those kind of get like you just get in the lounge hang out and start to get to know each other and play those kind of fun games so I know we're a werewolf campus or at least we were yeah, yeah. no not anymore exactly. oh, dang. all right uh so that's all to say there's usually just some fun games being had um that first night as everybody settles in and then for the week of welcome it's a lot of structured fun and exploration of Georgia Tech's traditions and resources uh, and then classes start the next week what else? Uh, there was something mentioned about the QR code regarding the check-in process on the slides. Could you explain that yeah. process? So we'll send you an email with a handful of reminders about move-in uh, about a week before you move in, probably like that Monday, Tuesday of the week before. Uh, and that will have your QR code built into it. So we'll tell you, it'll be like, this is your QR code for check-in, save this email or do a screenshot of this email or whatever you need to do so that you have it handy. So it's something that we'll send you the couple of days before you arrive. Uh, when can the beds get lofted? Beds will start actually at their highest lofting uh, like level because that's the most common thing that folks want. Uh, so if you decide that you wanted your bed lower, we will actually have a whole team running around during move-in days just assisting with bed loftings. And there will be signage up in the halls directing you how to do a request from that team so that it's like a rapid request that goes straight to them and they can show up quickly. Will there be dollies or things like that to help bring in bigger items like bridges? Yeah. Um, we won't have any dollies or hand trucks, but we do have the big move-in move in bins. Uh, they're also called speed packs, if anybody knows that terminology. So it's like a furniture skate with a big cardboard box on top of it that's like a quadruple ply hardcore cardboard box. And that will fit quite a bit of your stuff. Usually about a whole car load would fit in there. Again, unless some of y'all are bringing two or three vans worth. Um, so you'll have that to work with. If you feel like you would benefit from having a hand truck or a dolly, we don't discourage you from bringing your own. Um, we'll have curb ramps and other things like that to make the bins useful. So that will also help if you do bring your own hand truck. What's the policy about hanging things from the ceiling? Uh, as far as I know, nothing should hang from the ceiling. The ceiling has a bunch of um, fire safety stuff built into it, like your sprinkler system and everything. So we don't want anything hanging from the ceiling itself. If you want to hang things in your room, uh, like on the walls, uh, a lot of folks will do that. We just prefer the clear command strips, um, blue tape and the stretchy command strips are not kind to our paint and anything beyond that, anything, any holes that you put in the wall will correlate to a hole in terms of you having a fee, a hole in your wallet in the shape form of a fee after you move out. So we don't want you putting holes in the walls, um, but the clear command strips are a good fit if you're trying to hang stuff. We also find that a lot of students just end up using the kind of architecture of the bed frame to do a lot of their hanging because it's got like bars that you can work with. So someone asked, could they use the short-term parking before their check-in time? Uh, Accessing short-term parking is only possible if you have gone through check-in, basically. Um, so uh, theoretically, yes, but it would be kind of difficult if you haven't been there before. Now, if you are looking to just bring a car like of people to just come and explore campus and things like that, there are several visitor lots that are not near the residence halls, whereas a and those are places that you could just go and park and explore if you needed to. Um, and so like the student center deck and the Dalny deck are two that I would recommend if anybody is looking to do that early. Uh, but the short term parking otherwise is going to be hard to get into um, without having gone through check in first. I see a lot of questions about how students are able to send bridges to their room directly. Could you speak on that process? Sure. So that's that's what will happen if you rent a fridge in advance. Um, those companies come and put it in place a couple of days before move-in on a day that works really well for us. Um, so that just, just renting a fridge is is the, sh the sh long and short answer. Yeah. Uh, um, and actually any services like that, like ship to school services is another thing you might find in Google and that we work with um, ship to school services, give you an address to ship big stuff to, and then they come and bring in the big stuff to your room a few days before move in. 
We love that because it's less volume coming through um, on move-in day and it makes your day smoother because you have less to deal with. Um, so we do, again, shift to school services. There's not one that we work with in particular, but if you want to work with any of the ones who do it, um, we're happy to, um, to let them in to deliver your stuff. Um, so again, just Googling shift to school should give you quite a few examples. Someone asks, uh, if a student plans on bringing a car to campus, what should they do with their car between move-in day on the 13th and the 15th, which is when the permit becomes active? Uh, so if you have a permit and you arrive on the 13th, we're going to make sure that you park in sort of the like further or the farther rather um, short-term parking lots, because those are going to be part of your like long-term parking eventually. But we do need a handful of those lots to be clear on the 14th to facilitate move-in again. Uh, so I will tell you without giving you too much license that parking is really light on enforcement on those days, other than the parking decks that we need to have clear by 9, 9 p.m. Um, so, you know, short-term parking is from nine to, or is available until 9 p.m. that day. And those, the lots that we need for the next day are the ones that they will be ticketing. But beyond that, like the street parking around some of the halls and things like that, none of that, they will be aggressively ticketing until the 15th, so. It shouldn't hopefully be more than like one or two moves, depending on how often you go off campus to do other things. Yeah. What other questions are we getting? Someone who is flying in said their check-in time is 2.15 and they may arrive before 2.15 or after 5 o'clock due to flight delays. In the instance of when they arrive after 5 o'clock, where do they collect their keys from? Excuse me, Camille, can we back up to the after hours and late arrival? slide for me. Oh, excuse me. Um, yeah, if you arrive later than your appointment, um, if you arrive anytime before five o'clock while our central check-in is still open um, or our drive through check-in is still open, come to that. If it's after five o'clock, you'll go to the area office that is associated with your hall, um, generally speaking. And then, uh, and then after eight o'clock when they close, you'll call the RA on duty. And so to call your RA on duty, you'll go to your actual hall. And at the entrance to every hall, they have phone numbers written on the door. Um, sometimes it looks like this picture here. Sometimes it's a little bit of a bigger flyer, but it's standard at least that um, will be available on the door. And that's the RA on duty number. The RA on duty will let you into your room for the night, uh, but you don't get a key. You'll have to go and get your key the next morning. So if you do arrive after five o'clock on the 13th, your key will still be with all the move-in stuff for folks on the 14th. So you'll need to go to the CRC to the drive-through check-in the next day to get your key. Uh, any day after that, your key will be delivered to the area office and live there from there on out. So you'll go to the area office from there on out for, for a key that you need. Um, the after hours page, it's uh, on our website, it's housing.gotech.edu slash after hours, I believe, um, is a really great resource if you are somebody flying in who is like feeling nervous about such, um, about like your timing of such things. So don't hesitate, don't be too nervous because we are prepared for it. It happens all the time. What other questions? Lots of people want to know if they're coming in by ride share, how do they proceed? through the check-in process. If you're coming by rideshare, the first thing we want you to do is fill out the survey to let us know that you're coming by rideshare. Uh, there's a couple of different ways that we know we could bring you through check-in uh, and it will depend on how many people are needing to arrive that way. So we really do wanna know if you're gonna be here. In the past, and if nothing else, if we don't have the information we need to plan for something even better, if nothing else, you still go to the same check-in location, but your rideshare drops you off right there at the parking deck, and then you go through the drive through process in a golf cart with us, and then we take you in a golf cart to your hall. We're working on something a little better, and again, we would just need to know if you're going to be one of those people arriving that way, so do fill out the survey, uh, which I know we have linked in the chat. Um, to let us know if you're going to be one of those people. But if nothing else, you'll just get out of your ride chair and use a golf cart to go through the rest of the process. Someone asked, if you have a room on the third floor, how do you get heavy items up the stairs, such as a refrigerator? Uh, mostly with the help of our fraternity and sorority siblings here on campus. We get a lot of help from young students who are able-bodied and willing to help hoof stuff up the stairs. Um, again, we don't discourage you from bringing a hand truck if that will make your life easier. And then again, we've got some extra hands to help you get things up the stairs um, as much as needed. I will say, I think we've probably said it before in terms of packing smart, um, you probably don't need remotely as much stuff as you're planning to bring, 
Um, and we really recommend anybody who lives close who would have the opportunity to get more stuff mid semester only bring like six weeks worth of stuff and you'll be amazed at how much you don't actually need or don't actually miss um, and don't need to bring that much more. So if at all possible, pack light, think light um, and get more later as you needed. Um, What's the other thing I was going to say? Oh, just uh, being aware, I'm sure we already mentioned it, but many of our halls do not have elevators. Most of the first year halls don't. So that is something that you should be mindful of. Um, and again, connect with your roommate, find out who's bringing a fridge so that we don't have to do that twice. What other questions do we want to answer? Someone asked how, oh, when will the check-in route map be set? Um, we're actually working on that email now. I had hoped to send it yesterday, but we waited till today so we can hopefully include this recording. Um, but it'll have the map that Camilo's um, going to now. Perfect. Thank you, Camilo. Um, Check-in is in the CRC deck, but we really do need you to approach from the south because we're going to close down the um, street coming the other direction from the north. And so um, everything is made a lot easier when you come from that side. Um, and again, we're hopefully hitting send on that today, maybe tomorrow. Um, is it possible to keep items in storage for those who arrived a few days earlier than you can pick? Um, I mean, you can certainly rent a storage unit if you would like. We don't have anywhere that you can pre-deliver, th like that you, the resident, could bring something in advance a few days in advance. Um, some of that has to do with like our preparation and cleaning and everything um, as we turn over from summer. Uh, but if you are planning on arriving a few days early and need a place to stash things, um, there's a ton of short-term storage around us. Um, and I would say that's probably your best bet. Um, and in future, I would recommend we've got a couple of different companies that work with students to store stuff over the summer and bring it back. And so for future summers, that will be that can be handled differently. A student asked, where can they find their mailing address and mailbox? Yeah. So once you've registered for classes, and if you haven't registered for classes, it won't happen yet. Um, it'll be in Buzzport. That's where you find your mailing address information. And if you visit the post office's website, which I believe is just po.gotech.edu or postoffice.gotech.edu, one of those, uh, they have the instructions for like what the steps are in Banner and Buzzport to look it up. Uh, but it's important to know that you'll have a mailing address. It's not a mailbox. Um, you The address goes to the student center and students go to the student center to their desk to like get the mail while they're open. Um, it's not a box they can just check any time of the year. It's also worth noting on that same on that same thread that the everything will go through the central post office in the student center. So don't like we don't recommend sending huge packages because then people will have to carry them back to their hall. Um, that said, you can't have anything delivered directly to the residence hall. We have no one like unless your student just wants to sit right outside and wait for it. That's the only that's the only way that could be done. So what other questions have come up? Uh, will the dining halls have normal hours during welcome week? Uh, I think their hours may be just a little bit different than normal um, because they're serving like a smaller group of people for that first couple of days. Uh, but I think it's probably just in the vein of like where they might normally be open until like 10. They're only open till eight. Um, that information, and honestly, if I don't think we had this on our link, uh, our list of links yet, but it doesn't hurt. The dining hours page is worth bookmarking because their hours, like they have so many locations and hours change just enough at, for breaks and other things. It is just a great resource to have bookmarked. So if you haven't already, I would bookmark the dining hours page. Yeah. Well, so those students are asking, where is the student convocation? Uh, convocation happens in the McCamish Pavilion, which is on the northeast corner of campus at the corner of 10th Street and the highway. Um, it's uh, It'll happen on Sunday the 20th, and it's when you'll get your rat cap and a few other exciting things. That said, a convocation is not run by housing, so that's, I got to be honest, that's probably about as much as I know. Someone asked, do you know if items can be shipped from other stores to Tech Square? Amazon Hub Locker, or do items have to be purchased from Amazon only? Um, I know folks do send stuff to the Amazon Hub Locker in Tech Square. I know we had stuff shipped there just the other week for us. Um, so a lot of students will do that. You can ship Amazon packages to the student center. Um, just in both cases, again, somebody's going to be carrying it back to their dorm. So just making sure you're aware of that before you send somebody a bike. What other Speaking questions? Speaking of bikes, someone mm -hmm. said they'd like to bring a bike. Yeah. Where will they be able to lock it up? 
That is a great question. We do like bikes are great to have on campus. Wear a helmet. I can't say it enough. Your brains are worth a lot of money. Please wear helmets. Um, uh, so as far as bike parking, there are bike racks adjacent to every hall that are like outdoor racks. Um, most students, if at all possible, opt for the bike rooms, and there's usually a bike room for every couple of halls. If you go to the parking and transportation website about bikes, um, I think it's bike.pts.gotech.edu if, if one of my Leo students wants to drop that link, they have the listing of all the bike rooms as well as how you can register to get a spot in those bike rooms. We also recommend you register your bike with Georgia Tech PD because they it makes it easier to recover if it gets lost. Um, and it's also worth noting if you don't already have a bike but would like one, that Starter Bikes on Campus, it's a campus organization that takes abandoned bikes at the end of every year and refurbishes them and sells them for pretty cheap. Um, so that's a great student organization and a way to get a bike if you would like to have a bike. And then again, just register it and get yourself a spot in one of the bike rooms is my recommendation recommendation. What other questions do we have? Oh, someone asked their show up time. Is their time to show up at the CRC, not the time to move in? Correct. Correct. Whoever said that you hit the nail on the head. Um, your check-in appointment is when you should arrive at check-in at the CRC. We know that unloading and everything that comes after checking in and getting your key can take a variable amount of time. So it's the check-in appointment at the CRC. Like that is, that's the window or the 30 minute window. You should arrive there. Someone else asks, could you use the bike rooms for a one wheel also? I think I've seen it done. I know we have students on campus who like there's a unicycle club. There's this, also a student that has the, it's called penny farthing where you have the big wheel and the little wheel and stuff. I have not seen that in the bike room, but I have seen the unicycle in the bike room. Um, Related to that, again, we do want electric scooters to be parked outside. I don't know if, I think we maybe mentioned that. Electric scooters as much as possible can't be parked in the halls. They're a huge fire hazard. Um, so we're working on having better parking outside for them. Um, I do see a question, speaking of parking again, about parking permits. Um, that's another thing that's available once you've registered for classes. Uh, the parking website uh, to get a, a permit is driverseat.pts.gotech.edu. They just redid that portal and it's a lot better and fancier now. Um, but again, it won't work until you've registered for classes. So make sure that you have, like if you haven't done that yet, don't worry about getting a parking permit yet. What other questions are we seeing in the chat? Oh, I love this question about how do we get our buzz cards if you've already uploaded your picture. First off, thank you for uploading your picture already. We appreciate that. Uh, and since you've already uploaded your picture, it should be in your key packet when you get to check in at the CRC. So you get a little envelope that has like your a letter and either an E or an W for East or West. Um, and then it'll have your key and your buzz card and, and some helpful information in there. What other common questions are we getting? How do you know your move-in appointment time? That's a great question. If you don't, if you haven't looked already, your move-in appointment is listed in the housing portal. If you go into my housing, you should see it actually like kind of first thing on your like main page. Um, we also, again, we're going to send you that email about a week before you arrive that has the QR code that will also reiterate your appointment on there as well. Um, you have until the 31st to change your appointment if you need to. So do bear that in mind. Um, uh, because if you, if you, again, you want to change it by then so that we know when you're coming. What other questions do we see in? Can you use your bus card to enter other people's dorms besides your own? Nope. Uh, bus cards are going to be coded based on where you have residential access. So you'll only have access to your building. Uh, there's a handful of cases where it's like you have access to the laundry room that's attached to another building or a bike room that's attached to another building. But generally speaking, you'll only have access to your building. Um, if you have academic accesses needed, your department will provide those to you to get into certain academic spaces. But for us, we only give you the spaces that you should have access to. Are parents a part of all of the communication or emails sent to students? Uh, no, for the most part, we send the emails to the student's email that's listed on the application. Uh, for us, it's a contract that we have with the student, um, except in the cases where someone's a minor where we have that tacked on differently. Um, but generally speaking, we want your students, like we want to communicate with the students. They're the ones that we're going to communicate with throughout the year, and we want to build that line of communication early. For parents, I really recommend you read parent news. We try to put stuff in there every month, um, and we'll also send a handful of emails just to parents about a handful of critical things, like when the application opens up for next year's housing and things like that, we'll send y'all an, an email about that and a few other, like usually move out, we send y'all kind of an overview as well. But generally speaking, we try to have most of our communication be with the residents so that we can, you know, it's it's their contract, it's their, their um, living. 
So what other questions do we have coming up a lot? Um, I see one about how long you have with your families once your appointment starts. You really have, I mean, like as long as you want. I think I would want to check with my roommate before I have my mom continue to live with us for a couple of weeks. But generally speaking, like that day, there's no one rushing to get parents off campus as long as your car is moved out of the short-term parking by nine o'clock. That's not even a reason that they necessarily have to step free either. Uh, again, we really are invested in getting you through the unloading zone and getting your car out of there pretty quickly. But beyond that, you have the whole day or as much time as you need to unpack and settle in and do other things. Any other questions we have coming up? I know, folks, it looks like we had well over 100 questions. So if there is one that we missed, um, please put it uh, in again. And that way, like I see, just Hefner have an elevator? I believe Hefner does. Um, but again, most of our first year halls do not. I think it's just Freeman, Pitt and Freeman, Montag, which is kind of one group, uh, Hefner Armstrong, and then Glennon Towers. Um, Someone asks, who do they talk to regarding dietary restrictions and food allergies? Yeah, so the first thing you'll do is connect with the dietitian, um, campus's dietitian. You can reach out to them at dietitian at gotech.edu. Um, I believe also nutrition at gotech.edu are email addresses that work for them. Um, and we, we've got a whole team of chefs on campus who are really invested in supporting the dietary needs of our really diverse campus. So they're ready for, they're just like waiting for you to hit them with your challenging dietary restrictions so they can wow you with something that will um, get you the nutrition you need. So do reach out to them and work with them. They want to impress you and they want to challenge. So um, uh, I see there's also a good question about laundry rooms. Um, so laundry is free for residents. That's great. Laundry rooms, not every hall has one, but if it doesn't have one like directly connected to it, there's a hall nearby that you would have access to to do your laundry. Um, some laundry rooms are much bigger than others in terms of how many machines they have and things like that. Um, and I do see the question about, is it secure? Do you need to like sit and babysit your clothing? Not necessarily, but we also cannot emphasize enough that you need to set a timer so that when you're laundry is done, you go and you get it out and you move it. Because if you don't set a timer, if you're not mindful about that, if you leave your clothes for hours and hours, like at some point, someone's going to move your clothes because they need the dryer. So um, it is really important to keep in mind if you're doing laundry, just to set yourself a timer. Um, but it is free and only people like in the adjacent halls will have access to it. So access is at least somewhat limited. Are parents allowed to visit their student inside the dorms throughout the year? That is a great question for your student's roommate. That'll be one of the things that they decide. And I guess for your student, um, you know, you're certainly invited. And if your student and their roommate have a lot agreed that they can have guests over and things like that, then there's no reason it can't be a parent. Um, I'm trying to pull through the questions that seem to be popping up. Um, The QR code that we need for check-in, that's something we're going to email you about a week before. So it'll come in an email. We encourage you to take a screenshot of that email when it comes in. Um, so be watching your email. We're going to send another one in the next day or so. So if you aren't getting our emails in the next couple of weeks, reach out to us and make sure there isn't something wrong on the back end. Um, I see a question here about... Oh, so the 11 a.m. session is actually... This is... There's not an 11 a.m. session. I'm wondering if we need to like... Hang on, because folks might be showing up for an 11 a.m. session. I might do that. Um, uh, it says the location is a different dorm than where I'm living. Is that normal? I know that there was a handful of folks that their move-in appointment is saying a different hall, um, and I, I, I'm not sure on what the fix was that my team found, but that's they they want you to submit a housing help desk ticket about that. Um, so if you're if the hall listed on your move-in appointment isn't the hall that you think you're living in. There's, there's some glitch that they've been working out on the back end because we just moved to the cloud. Um, so it's worth submitting a housing help desk ticket just to make sure you're settled there. Um, can students use over the door hooks? Do they typically fit the doors? I think students tend to use that for the armoire, but I don't know if it fits on your actual door door. Okay. Yeah, I don't think it fits over the door door because they're just a little bit too wide, but the armoires have a door that is usually a good a good fit for that kind of thing.
All right. Um, I do see a question about, again, this is a critical one. You've been assigned a random roommate. How do you get into contact with them? You should see their information in the um, housing portal and you can send them a message within the housing portal, but you can also there share your like, you know, phone numbers or what have you to get in contact in other ways. So we do really do encourage you to do that. Although I don't want anyone to worry if they were assigned a roommate. So many of our students go with just luck of the draw with whoever happens to be in their room and that tends to be successful. So. All right, well, I'm going to give us um, just one or two more minutes for any remaining questions that are um, common or that pop up, and then we're, we're going to hang on past the 11 o'clock hour just in case there are folks who um, were looking for an 11 o'clock session, um, and we'll connect you all with the recording. Oh, there is a great question here about do most st uh, students live in the halls for all four years or do they start transitioning to an apartment? Um, uh, a lot of students will continue to live on campus, but more and more students uh, will start to live off campus um, earlier in their career because of our growing incoming class. Um, that just means there's going to be less space for upperclassmen as we move forward. But the good news is there is a ton of off-campus housing being built all around us, and not all of it is expensive. Um, a lot of it's really comparably priced. So the market around us for student housing is really good. Um, so we actually do some things in the fall and spring to help students figure out whether or not they're ready to live off campus and you know whether or not that shift is right for them. Uh, so we do encourage you to, to think about that as you know, uh, it, over the winter break, we'll encourage you to start to think about it because you'll apply for housing for next year in the spring. Parents, do most students buy dorm insurance? Do most students buy dorm insurance? Um, most students do not. We wish all students would. Your renter insurance, like having renter insurance is what covers your stuff. We don't have, like, we don't carry liability for 8,500 people. Um, that the state would never allow that. So we do recommend renter's insurance for the stuff that you have in your hall um, and for the things that you bring into your dorm. It's really not a bad idea at all. Um, I see a question about an out-of-state um, uh, family that they're scheduled to leave on the 15th um, and they were wondering if they should leave on the 14th. There's no reason that you have to. And honestly, even if your child is ready to like go and, and start living their independent life without you on the 14th, there's a ton of cool things to do in Atlanta for a day. So don't, don't wor worry too much about that. If you need to kill some time in Atlanta, it's a, a great city. And honestly, there's lots to explore with your student for that day. If you, if, the, if they're ready. Um, yeah, I see this question. I love that y'all are even asking if parents should make it a point to leave. Um, it's it's really up to your student. Like we want, you know, we know that you want them to feel like settled and secure, but you also don't want to smother them. And it's a very fine line to walk. And we know this is a momentous day because of of that happening. And then maybe your first time dropping off a student. Know that we're not pushing anybody out other than the nine o'clock parking deadline. Um, we're not pushing anybody out. So check in with your student. Have them take the lead, um, and then you know as my mother did, you know, then you get back in the car and then you can have a meltdown if you need to. That's how, that's how she played it. So. Um, will we want to connect to Ethernet every time we want internet in the dorms or is Wi-Fi good enough? I, I, it's not a bad idea to use it. And I know some students will set up like a laptop dock that then they can connect you to it. Um, it's, it's the Wi-Fi is good enough that you don't necessarily have to plug in all the time. But again, if you're doing gaming or like, you know, hardcore compiling of who knows whatever, um, it's not a bad idea to plug in. That does bring us right to 11 o'clock. Um, so we really, we appreciate everybody for reaching out. If you had, um, a question that we didn't get to, it may have been really specific to you or may have been a little bit duplicative. Um, we encourage you to reach out to the housing help desk and submit a ticket for any other, uh, anything that we didn't get to today. And again, watch your email because we will be sending you information, um, uh, every couple of weeks until we see you for move in, in just a few weeks. Thanks again, everybody for joining us today. If there's anybody here for the 11 o'clock session, uh, we it was actually a 10 o'clock session and I know we had mentioned 11 o'clock in a few places. And so we um, are just trying to figure out how many folks are holding on for an 11 o'clock. 
Uh, we do have the recording of the session we did just this last um, this last hour that we can drop in here, hopefully in just a minute. Uh, so if folks want to hang on and and we can see uh, what the what the best course of action will be for us if we want to hang on. <laughs> 